In this third and final video about the problems with the linear probability model, we're going to talk about the issue of non-normality in regard to the errors. So as before, we're going to assume that we have a model, which is we've got a limited dependent variable y, which takes on a value of 0 or 1, and it's being equal to beta times xi plus epsilon i. And in the last video, we proved that epsilon i was equal to we took on two values. If yi was equal to zero, then essentially what we were doing then is we were replacing this yi with a zero. And when we did that, we got a minus beta xi for the epsilon term when we take this beta xi over to the other side. And when yi is equal to one, then essentially we can just replace this left-hand side by a one. So we get one is equal to beta xi plus epsilon i. And when we take the beta epsilon, or beta xi rather, over to the other side, we're just left with 1 minus beta xi for the epsilon i term. Okay, so let's think about this a little bit further. So for one error epsilon i, we can mark on its two potential values. So one of the values we know is going to be minus beta xi. And the other value is just going to be 1 minus beta xi. So in theory, you could sort of think about them lying either side of the um, zero point on this particular axis. So all of our points, if they had the same xi, would have this sort of distribution, which would depend exactly on how many individuals were yi equal to zero opposed to yi is equal to one. But note that this is a discrete distribution. There are only two values which epsilon i can take on. Whereas what we normally require of our errors is we require them to be normally distributed, or at least in small samples, we require them to be not normally distributed, because then that allows us to do small sample inference. So the issue with the linear probability model is that because of this discrete nature of the errors, that means we're going to run into some issues of using sort of normal distributions for inference in small samples. And in small samples, what we'd actually need to do is we would need to do some sort of non-normal um, inference. So we'd use, need to use non-normal distributions in order to be able to do inference on small samples. Anyway, that's the last and probably the least important of the errors or the problems rather with the linear probability model. In the next few videos, we're going to talk about solutions.